Good afternoon. It's the uh, third Wednesday in Lent, and uh, we're moving our midweek Lenten worship services online. We uh, will be following our same theme that we've been using for the for our midweek services, using Lynn Twist's uh, book, The Soul of Money, as a theme, and the toxic myths of scarcity that she highlights uh, in reclaiming the wealth of our inner resources. So today we'll use uh, a couple of prayers from the responsive prayer from the ELW hymnal, and then a Bible reading and some reflection on the text. So we begin with prayer. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 3, starting in verse 7. John said to the crowds that came to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is laying at the root of the tree, and every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed to you. Soldiers also asked him, And we? What should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money. From anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. John's, uh, the, um, the toxic myth of scarcity that we're addressing today is more is better. More is better is a fallacy that's been around for the ages and has been an excuse used by the rich to acquire more and more and more. And it has been a motivation for the poor to find their circumstances lacking. Neither one of those is true. More is not better. More continues to be not enough, even for those who acquire so much. Today we see that being acted out in our society because of the pandemic, where people are hoarding things that are basic necessities. Toilet paper, hand sanitizer, soap, canned goods. Most of the people who are buying up all these things have enough already. And those who don't have enough can't find it. When we ascribe to this fallacy that more is better, there is never an end to what we need to acquire and how insufficient we feel. And that is not God's desire for us. 
God's desire for us is to live a life that experiences abundantly, uh, abun abundantly uh, the way in which God has blessed us. And, and we'll end today with the, the, our theme verse from John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. That's God's, art. That's God's desire for us. And when John the Baptist articulates that and, said, and the people say, well, what should we do? And he says, if you have two coats, share with someone who has none. If you have enough food, share with those who don't have any. In our modern context, John the Baptist gets dismissed out of hand as some sort of socialist. And he is articulating God's desire for us. God's desire for us is that we would all have enough, that we would all live with a sense of sufficiency, not scarcity. God's desire for us is that we would have the, the understanding of our belongings and the things we've been blessed with, that they come with responsibility. So John says, if you have two coats, or if you have abundant food, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to care for those who have less than you. When we lose sight of this, we put ourselves before others, we are selfish and self-centered, and that's the hoarding that's going on in our world right now. And God calls us to something better than that. It's also uh, kind of counterintuitive in an intelligent, logical response to uh, the reality we're in right now with the pandemic is that um, when someone goes to the store and has their own self-interest as, as their focus and buys up all of the hand sanitizer and soap, it's not in their best interest. You're taking care of your own needs, but isn't it also in your best need, interest in, in fulfilling your needs that your neighbor have enough hand sanitizer and soap to wash their hands? That really is what's best for you, not you having enough for you. The fear and the anxiety that is causing people to act out in the ways they are is not of God, and we don't have to succumb to it. So I invite you this week to look out for those around you. Strengthen the community what God, that God has blessed us with and put us in. That is what our call is as people of faith. We all have enough. We are enough, and God is with us. Let's end today with the prayer of the day from Responsive Prayer in the ELW. Let us pray. Oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that you always are walking, in, we are always walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. This Lenten season, take care of one another. In Jesus' name, amen.